Welcome to the Barreto family. My name is Kayla Barreto and we are missionaries here in Colombia, South America. And this year, as we started the new year, 2022, I have decided on creating a few personal goals for myself. And we actually just had a retreat with all of the Colombian missionaries with World Reach. And on that retreat, we talked about some of our vision for this upcoming year, um, some of our goals in terms of ministry, and we kind of challenged ourselves as a team to pray over those goals, to pray over what God might have in store for us, what God might be planning for us in this upcoming year as a ministry. But with that as well, we also wanted to take time and think about what we could do for ourselves, what goals do we have for ourselves personally. And so I guess I have kind of three main goals, and one of them is just to spend more quality time in the Word. This has definitely been tricky, um, having a brand new daughter. Um, it's been tricky to find times where I can be completely focused on my Bible reading because there's always something that's there that can distract me. And so trying to cut out time that's specifically for my personal growth in the Word. And it's so tricky in ministry as well because we're doing so much with the Word of God in terms of teaching, but it's different than having a personal time in the Word. And so I've been trying to wake up earlier and get my time in even before Eliana wakes up just so that I can really have that dedicated time. The second thing is working on just my physical health. And after my C-section, um, that's been a challenge for me. And so spending some time daily, just doing some basic exercises, working really on getting back some core strength. Um, and I've actually reached out to a pastor's wife in the United States who's going to help me a little bit, hopefully, um, with some ideas, just because that's one area that, unfortunately, after that C-section, I am back down to, I guess, my normal weight, my normal lifestyle, but I just haven't been able to get core strength back. And so Bible reading, core strength. And then my third thing, and this is, I think, the most challenging for me, is I have challenged myself, and I want you guys to keep me accountable, I have challenged myself to read one book a month. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but I am not a reader whatsoever. I don't enjoy reading. It's more of a chore to me. Um, I was always that kid in school that put off the book report until the very last night and praise God I had a very loving mother who would stay up and read me the books so that I could do my report. But I'm just not a reader. But this year I really felt it necessary. Um, like I said, we have a new kid, we're planting a church, there's just so much going on that I really want to grow personally. And I think one of the ways that I can grow and really focus on that growth is by reading. And so for January, I did, I succeeded. <laughs> I'm so excited. I read a book in January. And that's one more book than I think I read it last year. It's fine. But the book I read in January is called How to Plant and Grow Strong Churches Through the Inductive Bible Study Method. And so, it's by David Lawson. It's one of the precept ministry books. Um, and it's a short book. I started out nice and easy for January. But what I liked about this is that it applies to what we're doing. So my husband and I are planting a church. We're working on planting a church in Bosa, which is a neighborhood here in Bogota. And that church plant, we started uh, just before the pandemic in 2000, what was that? 2020? 2019? 2020. That would have been in 2020. Um, we started it in January and we started with doing outdoor outreach ministry with kids. And that's where we've kind of stayed. Um, throughout the entire pandemic, we visited the kids door to door. We gave them Bible study packets. We have recently started back in person. If you want to check out a video about that, you can check it out. We have been meeting consistently every Saturday in person with these kids. Um, we meet from about 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the afternoon between startup and everything that happens. And now we're really wanting to go deeper, mostly with the adults now. So we're going to keep doing that kids ministry. 
Um, we actually use quite a bit of the inductive Bible study method with our kids' packets, especially with the older kids, the ones that are over the age of 11. But our goal is now in this next year to start Bible studies with the parents. And so some of what this does is it talks about the inductive Bible study method as kind of a core foundation in this book. So the book goes through and it talks about how you can use the inductive Bible study method to plant churches to lead small group Bible studies, and even to plan and prep like your outlines for preaching. The inductive Bible study method in its core is observation, interpretation, and application, but they do it by marking the scripture. So you actually take, and I'll see if you guys can see it, you actually take chunks of scripture and you mark who the recipient is, who the author is, um, sometimes you mark key words, you might mark God, Jesus, and so as you mark it, you're diving deeper into the text, and then you use what you've marked to answer those observation questions, to start to apply it to your lives. Um, and so that's the basic method, and we've done it a lot through the Bible Institute that we help run here in Columbia, but this was specifically geared towards how you use that to plant churches. And one of the key things that it said was to plant the church through Bible studies which is the same thing we learned when we took um, a course through Bible League, was that that's the most healthy, or I guess one of the most healthy ways of planting a church. One thing that stood out to me as we're planting this church, um, it's a challenge, it's difficult, but I loved how this compared it to a plant. So I'm gonna read a few little excerpts real quick. So it talks about how a plant, you need to plant it, you need to nurture it, you need to water it. Well, God has principles in place, which when followed, cause the church to grow. You need the initial seed, which is the gospel, exposure to the sun, talking about the son of God, and the watering with the word to grow a church. Most of all, you need God's providence for germination, sprouting, and growth. After all, it is God who gives new life and provides growth. So I guess that's our prayer. Our prayer is that God would guide us. Um, we have that gospel planted. We're going to continue planting the gospel through Bible studies. We obviously want them to get to know the Son, the Son of God, um, while we're studying the Word of God. And then really just to see where God leads and how God helps that to grow. So pray with us. We are excited for what God has planned. This was the first book that I read. I'll put a link down below if you are interested in that. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see a little bit more about our ministry, I'll put another video here that has a little bit more about the ministry we do. And don't forget, you can always subscribe so that you get notices when we post new videos. Love you guys, and we will see you on the next video.